you notice I'm not letting go of the podium today. My husband gave me instructions. I believe it was don't let go of the podium today. So for once I did what you told me, honey. Aren't you proud? Yeah, me too. I am glad to. See, you know I never listen. All right, I need to apologize for last week when I read the entire chapter of our book. Today I'm going to try to stick with the verses I'm supposed to have. Um, we are going to read out of Isaiah 66, verses 12 to 14b. If you're using the Pew Bible, it's on page 1166. For this is what the Lord says, I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice, and you will flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Mother's Day. Where would we be without mothers? A bunch of us would be very lost. A couple of years ago, I ran across an open letter to pastors about Mother's Day. And this is the advice from that open letter. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year or last year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment. We walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make it harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who have lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, I'm sure you remember those, medical tests, and overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those of you who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who are step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those of you envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, 
Yet the dream is not to be. We grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold your own children in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. And we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you. Excerpt from an open letter to pastors by Ann Young. As I thought about that several weeks ago when I reread this, I thought about God and God's comfort being like that of a good mother. And comparing God's comfort to that of a good mother, God's comfort is a very strong theme in the Bible. Portions of the prophetic books of Isaiah chapters 40 to 55, and Jeremiah chapters 30 to 31 are often described as books of comfort. Yet the theme of God as comforter isn't limited to those specific texts. We hear it in many of the Psalms. Psalm 23, for example. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament speaks of God as the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation for the people of God. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Writes John in the book of Revelation. Chapter 21 verse 4. Yet looking at this imagery in Isaiah 66. It communicates especially well. God comforts like a good mother comforts her child. Now, that's not to say God doesn't work through fathers. Fathers can also provide comfort. Yet there's a little difference between the comfort of a mother. And the children need the, the tender love of a father every bit as much as they need the tender love of their mother. And we also know that when it comes to push and shove, when the knee is scraped, I hope dashed, children often run first to their mother. Sometimes holding back tears until they are in the arms of their mother. Visiting with, with Terry the other day, she said that as they were talking with Ryan out in the hallway and Morgan was still, had just been moved to recovery and the doctors were talking and said they'll be bringing Axel by. And as he passed by and Ryan spoke, I think you said he took, Axel took his first breath. So you see, fathers can have it too. How 
Having said this, we should note that in the verse from Isaiah 66, God was speaking and promising comfort to grown-ups as well. The hurts of childhood are fleeting. And often a hug and a few tender words are sufficient to supply the comfort that's needed. The hurts of adulthood. The pain of loss. Worry. Moms, how many times did you worry over your kids? Not to say dad didn't. But moms tend to worry just a little bit more. Illness. The realities of the human condition are all another matter. And for those, we might long for comfort and help as effective as that which we find from our mothers in our early years. Therefore, all mothers know that comforting a child does not end when they go off to college. Or even when they marry and have children of their own. So how exactly does God comfort us? For one, God comforts us through the presence, the care, and the verbal encouragement of other Christians. While there are some Christians who are especially good at this, those that have good listening skills and sensitivity, Encouragement is something that all of us can do. One definition of comfort is to stand alongside, to lend support and encouragement when the situation cannot be changed. You see, it's not just mothers, teachers, mentors. Sometimes pastors, you know, we're, we're a little flaky. We have our good days and bad days. But we can stand and offer that encouragement. It's something that all of us can do for others. If we'll only do it. And such standing alongside often helps those dealing with that which cannot be changed to cope with the situation as it is. Secondly, God sometimes comforts us more directly. The psalmist says, when my anxieties multiply, your comforting calms me down. Psalm 94 verse 19. Interesting here is that the verse from from Psalm 94 also bemoans the injustice of life and arrogance of evildoers who seem to get away with their deeds. Yet the psalmist finds comfort in the confidence that God reigns and will deal with with those iniquities and miscreants in God's own time. This is why the writer can say, Who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands up for me against the evildoers? If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought... My foot is slipping. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, held me up. Psalm 94, verses 16 to 18. How God chooses to deliver comfort varies from situation to situation. Sometimes it comes while we are in prayer. 
Sometimes it may be transmitted through a specific verse or passage that we're reading that really speaks to our hearts, our souls. Or it might simply come over us as an inner assurance in the midst of grief or trouble. Many of us can remember our mother's comfort. On this day, some still have mothers we can call or maybe send a card to or a bouquet of flowers. Nevertheless, we are grateful for our mothers. We are thankful for their endearing and unconditional love. And we are glad that when we were children, we had mothers to whom we could run to for comfort. Unfortunately, there are some that didn't ha- did not have such a mother. Maybe they lost a mother while they were young in life. Or whose experience does not align with God's description of a mother who comforts a child. This is something I, and I hope you, would not wish on any child. You don't want children to have a sense of loss. So even the absence of such a comforting presence can reinforce in a way the reality of it and its power. Intuitively, whatever our experience, we understand the concept of a mother's comfort. God chose to use this metaphor to help us Understand how God desires to relate to you and to me. And so on this Mother's Day, we can be thankful for our earthly mothers. And we are grateful to God for the comfort offered us. Even if today we sense a loss. Or if our hearts are swelling and overflowing with love. God's word to us doesn't leave too much room for misunderstanding. God says, I will comfort you. How do we respond? Let's allow God to encircle us with the arms of love and mercy. Let us feel the comforting presence of the Almighty. Let us submit to the gentle touch and embrace of God as we are led through those rough patches of life. We all have them. We are not immune to them. And let's relax and stop resisting God's firm and persistent efforts to draw us into the comfort of His divine presence. Will you pray with me? Holy Father, Heavenly God, we thank You for giving us mothers, for putting them in our lives, for putting those motherly type people who influence our lives, who touch our lives in such a way that they comfort us, they remind us of you. They remind us of the love that you have for us. We ask your blessings upon all of them. 
be a teacher, mother, grandmother, aunt, mentor. Giving you thanks and praise. We ask it in the Holy Savior's name. And all God's children said, Amen.